From now until Monday morning, Code Espresso is 30% off as opposed to the normal 10%. So head over to gfuel.com and check out any starter pack, new tubs, or shakers if you're interested. And be sure to use Code Espresso at checkout. Link in the description below. So it turns out that update was a lot closer than we all thought. And with it came a lot of changes, fixes, and some new content with it. Modern Warfare's update 1.09 went live late last night around 3.30 a.m. ish here on the East Coast, meaning that it was just after midnight where Infinity Ward was. So you could have either downloaded it like me shortly after it went live if you're a night out, or you may be jumping on for the first time since and have a hefty download waiting for you. Whatever the case, though, we're going to break down everything that really changed in this update, what you can expect when jumping in, and the new content that's already there for you, and the changes that came along with it. If you have any thoughts, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you are new, do be sure to hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already, especially if you're a part of that 76% of viewers who are not, to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare and all things Call of Duty on a daily basis. But anyways, let's jump into the update. Like we mentioned, this was a title update, so you'll need to have downloaded the update, or if you haven't gotten around to it just yet, you'll have to before you jump onto Modern Warfare the next time before you play. This update was just under 13 gigabytes on PlayStation 4, 12.9 to be more precise. I heard discussion though that it was a little larger on Xbox, but to that I can't really confirm nor deny since I don't have the game on Xbox, but you can use the baseline of around 13 gigabytes. So depending on your internet connection and if you're on PS4, the copying time on top of that, use that information accordingly for when you want to jump in and timing it just right. But as for what's actually included in the game, let's start with the more fun stuff, the new content, the things that are literally weren't here as of yesterday when you're playing, but are now. As for the MP side, we end up seeing that we have two brand new playlists, Realism Mosh Pit and Gun Game. Now, Realism Mosh Pit is a combination of Domination, Hardpoint, Headquarters, and Kill Confirmed, all utilizing the Realism rule sets of upped headshot values, minimalism when introducing the HUD, and things alike. This playlist is a way to introduce Introduce realism, but on a broader scale for the players that did enjoy it. I know it's not everybody's favorite cup of tea, but the mode has garnered kind of a bit of its own diehard following, so for those that do enjoy it, it's a welcome addition to see it coming back in the manner that it is. And if you enjoy the realism mode, jump in and try it out. Gun game is, well, gun game. Nothing really too out of the ordinary here with this one, other than it's the inaugural edition of the mode in Modern Warfare. Whether it stays around as a stable, constant mode for the rest of the year, we don't know just yet, but if you jumped on last night, it was definitely a sweat fest though that's likely to be anticipated for a thursday night going into a friday morning at like 4 to 5 a.m but how much it calmed down since then is yet to be truly determined outside of a few matches played on my end but it's your basic functions of free for all but cycling weapons throughout the match with the end goal of being of course the first to clear that gauntlet of weaponry in the game this one's a great one to return personally i've been a fan of gun game for as long as i can remember i'm pretty happy with it and to see it introduced within modern warfare is a cool little fun addition side note now though talking about these new playlists and what's also new with the menus there's now imagery with each menu selection tiles so the things like your quick play realism mosh pit ground war and everything like that now has a corresponding image to kind of just spicing up the visuals not anything that's really huge or game changing but something that adds a little extra flair and something that did change now that's all that was added new in mp and it may not seem like a whole lot but that's because spec ops was actually a main focus for this update and thus we got new operations and missions in this game out of this update we saw the addition of operation harbinger and operation brimstone as well as a classic spec ops door kick with a three star rating system and rewards in place for that one admittedly operation harbinger and brimstone i haven't played to the fullest extent of gameplay just yet to understand fully and give you the best tips and layout as of writing my notes down for this video at 5 a.m. But these are two more large scale operations, both of which actually leaked by Reddit user Senesalo, who we've talked about here on the channel before. And we talked about those last week at some point, but to see them now fully implemented and as soon after as they were, it's pretty cool to me. Harbinger has a description of gather intel on the whereabouts of a local informant mage and verifies reports of a major shipment leaving Verdansk. And Brimstone has a description of Al Traficante's train has left the quarry carrying explosives. Fight your way to the rail yard, recall the train, and rig it for detonation. So make sure you check those out. And then, of course, we do have the third addition here for Spec Ops, that being Operation Door Kick, which is your standard mission like we've seen in the past with a three-star rating system based on your completion with XP and some extra rewards given depending on where you rank up. But outside of the new content, what else changed? 
Well, a lot, but perhaps not the a lot you may have been hoping for. There was that rumor to overhaul that was mentioned right after launch that I know a lot of people have gotten their hopes up for, and this wasn't unfortunately that. So regret to tell you that a lot of the stuff from here on out is a lot of technical fixes, a lot of bug fixes, and still some fixes that still need to be coming because some bugs still persisted. Some even were created as a result of this update. But as for the things that actually changed, let's talk about the weapon tuning here for this. There was one weapon that was tuned and then some adjustments and fixes made accordingly. But the first we can talk about is that of the FN SCAR 17. There was a slight increase to the ADS time, which is weird that it got nerfed when it was kind of already pretty bad with this ADS time to begin with, and then a reduction to the barrel and bipod grip penalties. That's about it for the actual weapon tuning that we ended up seeing here out of this. But as for the adjustments and fixes, there was apparently a fix for the rocket launcher camos not unlocking or tracking properly. There was also a fix apparently for the model 680 camos not unlocking or tracking properly. Then there was apparently also a fix for the white placeholder box appearing when leveling a weapon and unlocking new attachments, a fix that added descriptions to all optics to have the scope glint. Then also a fix where the P90 and the FFS ring sight would create a scope Scope glint. Thermal scopes are now able to see through smoke grenades, and there was also a fix for charms not appearing where they should be on various weapons. After that, we saw some progression, some challenges, and mission challenges fixed out, in which those included a cleaned up and updated description for various number of challenges across the board, the officer challenge of heads up being fixed, destroy vehicles with launchers supposedly being fixed, the doing work, aggression, expert gunsmith, and one trick pony challenges all being apparently fixed as well. Then came a slight nerf to the infantry assault vehicle, also known as the tanks. And this is one that kind of perplexes me. What is mentioned is it reduced the damage radius and lethality of the turrets, but I don't know if that damage radius is meant specifically for the turret. And if it only applies to the turret, that one kind of missed the mark here because that wasn't the issue if you ask me. The issue could have come down to a number of different things. The spawns, the armor value, the lethality of the actual tank mortar shells, and a couple other things. But I guess that nerf is kind of cool. But again, seems to miss the mark here a little bit on that one. If it only applies to the MG turret on the top, like it kind of seems like it's worded. Then we saw some perk changes of spotter, EOD, quick fix, and amps, to which spotter was not marking equipment properly, field upgrades, or kill streaks through walls in FFA. There was a fix to the spotter perk that allowed for that to work as intended. Then there was a fix to spotter not marking UAVs and also slightly brightening the outlines of things that were marked. EOD ended up having a fix for players losing HUD elements after hacking an enemy claymore in certain scenarios. Quick fix allowed for the perk to give faster regeneration when earning kills with a throwing knife, and then Amped was not properly stowing the riot shield as quickly as it should, so that was fixed out and now working as intended, at least to my knowledge. Dead Silence, though it's not a perk, was something that made a little bit of some headlines here out of this as well. If you follow the competitive community, you know that this is something that was an issue as of recently, and this ended up fixing Dead Silence's field upgrade for not lasting the correct amount of time in the CDL rule sets. So in theory, if it does what it should, it should fix out the issue that was prominent again within that competitive community. Now, outside of that, though, talking dead silence and kind of in the same vein, footsteps were also adjusted in the volume and sound type played for crouch walking and walking while aiming down sight. And this is one that again made headlines because, well, it wasn't for a good reason. But in the patch notes over on blizzard.net, there were some internal notes that were published with the actual patch notes that were meant to be taken out, I would imagine. But it ends up having a sub note saying, this is a hot topic in the community. And this is not the change they were hoping to see. Our core players want to see footstep volume dramatically reduced. So whether this is an indication that there's still some coming or it's saying that this isn't what we should be doing, but we're going to push it through anyway. I guess it goes down one of those two forks in the road, which we'll have to wait and see how time ends up shaping the full picture, but certainly not a good thing to include in patch notes when a lot of people are already wondering if they're going to listen to the community's feedback. But not staying on that topic for too long because that's a whole issue in and of itself. There were also updates to the kill feed in which again they removed those things like they removed the avenged you, saved you, so on and so forth. And also now fixed out the kill icons for collaterals. Those won't be affected by double kills. The penetration icon won't be a part of collaterals in feeds. And also the only thing that the penetration icon will be in is if it's single kills through various walls and surfaces. 
So those were adjusted. Also added was the option to always sprint, something that can be turned on. Then in one life modes, we ended up seeing the fix for the camera angle hitching on a player's death location when transitioning to a spectate mode. So those no longer can provide for a third person call out that proved to be advantageous for the player's team that ended up having the player dying. They also had a fix for the weapons not animating when sprinting at the beginning of rounds. Killstreaks had some adjustments in which it fixed an issue where selected killstreaks would revert to pre previous selection mid-match. That happened to me plenty of times. Happy to see that finally fixed out and also fixed where player angles using the shield turret killstreak could be seen through smoke at certain places and the side panels of the turret. Lethals and Tacticals had some adjustments for the decoy grenade as well as the snapshot grenade in which the decoy grenade had a fix showing a blinking red light for both allies and enemies and then for snapshot grenade it slightly brightened the player outline when they were spotted. As for the CDL as well as the global changes to my understanding. Thermal scopes are now able to be seen through smoke grenades. We mentioned that earlier. It added the option to disable the spawn camera in those matches that you have to set up for scrims or anything like that. And it also fixed an issue where the mount interaction prompt was disappearing when planning or defusing the bomb in search and destroy. As for private matches, kind of since we're on that same vein again, it added the option again to disable the spawn camera. It also fixed the bug where the starting flags captured in private match option was not functioning as intended. It fixed the bomb screen appearing blank when defusing or planting the bomb in search and destroy with realism enabled and it added the bomb carrier indicator. As for some fixes to the leaderboards and the combat records, it fixed the bug where selecting all would sometimes kick the player back out to the menu. I had that happen to me once or twice. I don't check my stats all that often, they're leaderboards. And so whenever it did happen, I was kind of confused as to what is this? Like what, why did I just back all the way out? But that's been fixed out if you guys experienced that. And also added CTF and hardpoint into the combat record. Audio and voice chat options were adjusted in which there's now now, the options for no effect, which is the default voice chat. There's no additional effects or EQ adjustments. There's stealth comms, which bring the immersion of the campaign into MP with added SAS radio effects to voice chat. And then there's the classic chatter in which you can coordinate with your team using classic Modern Warfare radio effects. For spec ops, it added the munitions drops. After various objectives, a care package will drop to provide you with much needed ammo, which is pretty cool. Then there were various exploit fixes for things like an issue where players could lose functionality after the EMP drone hit them in Operation Crosswind. It also fixed crashes that occur when viewing the scoreboard. And then in survival, it fixed the enemies spawning out of bounds on Piccadilly. As for other general changes, well, we then saw the fix for a bug where a player could spawn without a character model whenever spawning in a friendly vehicle. It had various exploits across all maps and modes. It had a fix for an issue where copying an opposing player's loadout was also copying their kill streaks. It fixed the after action report not displaying newly acquired awards. It fixed player rank icons not appearing on the scoreboard. Shorten the amount of time and execution and animation will play. Fix the nameplates being visible in certain locations on Piccadilly. And also a fix was deployed for players being able to join a match even though they've been blocked. Now, that's everything that changed here with this, save for some PC things, which you can find linked in the description below with the full notes, but they kind of just cover general fixes for the game. But like we mentioned, it's a lot of technical stuff, a lot of things that you probably weren't expecting. And if you came in with high hopes, probably let you down a little bit. And on top of that, it also added some more bugs into the game in which things like challenges are still bugged. I know that for a fact, the officer challenges still have a couple that are a little finicky in which 100% at this time literally isn't possible. You can't get 100% of your officer challenges done like a lot of people were hoping to do. Pretty sure that the camos are still bugged in some various aspects. I think the Magnum was up there for one of those that had an issue. So Damascus users that are really on that cusp of getting the max camo still can't do it. Lasers apparently are busted on some weapons. Weapon XP apparently isn't working where you can't progress your weapons further. It resets some challenges that may have been partially done in rare cases. And again, like those things even being published on the back end that may not have been supposed to be seen in the public view about that footstep audio, it didn't turn out to be the best thing here. So whether or not we get another title update in the next couple of days to hopefully correct these things, your guess is as good as mine, but it fixed a lot of stuff, but also still didn't and also presented some new challenges in its own right. So I guess when you think about it on a technical standpoint, it was a big update. It was something that did fix a lot of things, but there's still issues that do persist. So it's not the be all end all update like maybe a lot of people were hoping for, but at the same time, it's an update no less. So 
that's where we're gonna wrap it up let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below are you guys happy with this update are you guys disappointed whatever it may be feel free to let me know your thoughts and why in the comments down below and of course if you are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern warfare updates news information tips tricks all that good stuff we'll keep you covered here on the channel daily with the best that we can so if you guys also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best places to get connected outside of youtube correctly on both those if you guys want to strike up a conversation ask me a question wherever it may be that link is down there in the description below but let's send out of the way thank you guys all so much for watching modest espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace